slippery mud. Wow, that sort of came out of nowhere. Who knew Picnic Point would have so much information? Here's the middle of the night, it's about 2 o'clock in the morning. A kite surfing spider. Enough talking, more reading. That's the first campsite I'm rejecting today. <laughs> I hope that doesn't continue all night. I don't want to quit. Good morning. I had a magnificent sleep last night. Oh my goodness. I woke up once when it started raining. Um, and that was it. Oh, not true. I woke up at six this morning to the sound of a <laughs> very loud horse whinny, neigh, whatever you want to call it, echoing through the forest from behind me. So I'm assuming they saw the tent and went, what the? Guys! <laughs> it's kind of what I imagined in my head. Um, I saw the hoof prints down by the river where I pulled my canoe out. Uh, so I knew that horses did come through here, but I suspect at six o'clock in the morning, it was still dark, that they're actually wild horses. I put the tarp over the tent because I knew it was gonna rain. It is perfectly dry in here. It's a little bit darker because of the, the tarp, which means I sleep a little bit better. I'm definitely gonna do it again tonight and it could just become a regular thing. Um, packing up a dry tent is totally worth the pain in the ass of putting up the tarp over the top of it. So unfortunately that lovely blue sky has disappeared. So that means that I'm gonna to have to pack up real quick because it does look like it's gonna rain in the next 10 minutes, which is really annoying because the tarp is dry. I really shouldn't have dawdled this morning. Yeah, so let's get the pack up started. I'm just about to go. The campsite is completely refurbished to bush. And then we can hit that beautiful river. The 9.30 takeoff is what happens when you wake up at quarter to eight. I had a lovely sleep though, so let's get going. Oh, this is gonna be heavy as it's right out of the water. <laughs> okay. That wasn't so bad. Yeah, okay, pretty good. Now, woo, slippery mud. I'm going to try and jump in sideways. 
but we really don't want to get too soggy today. It's cold. There we go. And we're <laughs> almost losing the pedal. Oh, golly. Oh, I feel so much better today. I had a great sleep. I, <laughs> I did sleep for about 11 hours, so that was awesome. Clearly I needed it. All right, well, let's get out of this eddy. And goodbye campsite. That was a good one. Um, yep. There is bad reception along here, but I've organized to check in three times a day over this stretch because of the bad reception, because at least one of those texts will get through each day. So the Barma Forest is actually the largest red gum forest stand in Australia. Red gums are Eucalyptus camaldulensis, and the way I can remember that is when I was tour guiding, one of the tour guides that was training me said, you just got to remember Eucalyptus camel dancers. <laughs> the flow feels like it's picked up, but I think that is actually because the river is a little narrower here than it was previously. I don't think they're letting any extra water down. It, doesn't, it certainly doesn't look like the, the level rose overnight. So it also doesn't look like it's, it lowered, which is good. I hope it stays at at least this level for the rest of the trip. There's something spooking the birds in the forest in there. It's interesting listening for the bird alarm calls, um, which invariably are a number of species all going ballistic at the same time. <laughs> Sometimes I'm the cause of their uh, alarm calls, but quite often it will be an eagle or it might be a car driving through or someone on a horse. You can always hear where it's coming from though. So when it's all around you, or at least on one side of the river, very close to you, you can pretty much guarantee it's you that's, <laughs> that's being alerted about. But like that last one was uh, probably 100 metres away, so that one wouldn't have been me, that would have been um, something else that they saw. It's interesting, the trees in here don't look very old. At my completely uneducated guess I would say 100 to 200 years old each. Most of the really big trees that I've um, that I've seen that I know how old they are because there's a sign saying how old they are are about 400 years old or older. And there's none of those forest giants in here. The, there is a lot of competition, of course, which tends to mean that those forest giants aren't as common, but I haven't seen any that are enormous. That would suggest to me that this forest probably has been used for logging. Uh, it's a national park now, but at some stage it may have been used for selective logging, um, which would have removed all of the really big trees all of those forest giants but there are still plenty of you know, well-aged trees in here they're not all young spindly things and they're all very tall which is i imagine due to the competition with each other they're all trying to reach for the sky as much as possible but when they fall in the river <laughs> that means you get snags in the middle of the river because they are as tall as half the width of the river
Wow, that sort of came out of nowhere. I guess that's the Pitman Point Cafe. Doesn't look very open. <laughs> Okay, according to Google, it is closed and it will open on Friday at 5 p.m. It is Tuesday at 2 p.m. So I'm not going to wait around for it to be open. <laughs> oh dear. Ah, it looks like there might be a beach. Let's have a look. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Just makes me quite happy. My first beach all day. Okay. This is Picnic Point. And the autumn colours are just gorgeous through here. I'm going to do this timber heritage walk which will tell me about the timber cutters that used to come through this area. There are these big red gum posts all the way along the drive into Picnic Point so I'll uh, have a read and find out some info. So on this last plaque it uh, talks about HB Douglas who fought for the forest and he was concerned that with the summer flooding that was coming through so that the irrigators could take their water out of the Murray during summer that these forests were getting flooded and it was damaging the trees. So he was the one that actually proposed the regulators that I've been passing into all of the creeks be built so that the flooding could bypass the forest uh, on an annual summer basis well, that was a really interesting read actually. I'm glad I did stop and have a read. This is where the idea of thinning forests came from as well. Um, when a flood came through and uh, germinated a whole lot of red gum seedlings, they were all f uh, competing with each other, fighting for the sunlight and um, weren't winning. They were all getting a bit scraggly looking. So, um, one of the people, let's see, it's John Manton. Um, he was the person that requested the government uh, give him a grant to do some forest thinning. And it was 10 years before they gave it to him, but there was a severe employment shortage at the time. And so lots of people from Sydney were sent up here to help thin the forest. And it did make a, a significant difference, which is why they still do it today. Very interesting. Who knew Picnic Point would have so much information? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Bugger. Mm. I have been dreaming about this meal for three days. Tonight is the first night I have been bothered to cook it. Okay. Little bit of pepper. Okay, 
That is ready to eat. Delish. I was just about to eat my dinner and it started raining so I've quickly packed up all of the uh, get wettable stuff and I'm going to go eat inside my tent. into a beautiful day. Today I'm heading into the Narrows. So the river goes from up to 100 meters wide down to around 30 meters wide, which channels obviously all of the water into the narrower river, which means it goes faster. So it's 28 kilometers to, Par to Parma. <laughs> I think I've got one thing on the mind. It is 28 kilometers to Barma through the Narrows. I'll be going past Lake Moira on that side and Lake Barma on that side. I got a great night's sleep last night. I really I slept so soundly, but I've woken up feeling really tired today. Maybe it's just the knowledge that I'm gonna hit the 600 kilometer mark today. <laughs> Who knows? Oh, this is beautiful. I wish I could just float slowly today. Yeah, there's still a good flow. Oh. I do have two woolen thermals on today because this morning was cold. Okay, so I'm just going to put my multivitamin slash caffeine tablet into my um, small nudging and hopefully they'll perk me up a bit. Okay, let's do it. There's so much civilization around, it is still very quiet, which is lovely. I imagine in summer, totally different scenario. <laughs> oh. Is it just me or are now jeans really hard to drink out of? I feel like I'm in an English village when I look this way, when I look that way. No, <laughs> definitely not. So pretty, isn't it? Do you know a thought struck me this morning? So I was paddling past all of these permanent cabins. <laughs> Holiday parks are just retirement villages for people that haven't retired. You know, you buy in, you have an annual fee that you pay for someone else to look after your grounds and all the services. 
and you're living on top of each other. <laughs> but it's friendly and nice as a general rule. <laughs> Deep, I know. <laughs> oh, I'm starting to make myself laugh. Oh dear. Oh, that looks so nice. Someone's got a little wood fire burning in their cabin. Oh, I must have a fire tonight if I can. Or maybe tomorrow. Tonight might be a bit hard. Heaps of kangaroos in these parks too. And I think they're very well fed. So this is a new track that I've not seen before. There's a few little ones, they're, they're tiny. So if I put my finger next to this, complete one. Yeah, very small. So some sort of native marsupial, I'm assuming, because it's got claws. Ooh, but then there's a big one here. That's quite a bit bigger. Interesting, I wonder what it is. Maybe it's a Rakali, a water rat. So in the tradition of all long distance adventurers, I felt the need to mark the occasion. So this is one of the culverts that was put in by that forward-thinking conservationist to stop the forest from being flooded every year during the summer floods um, that are sent down for the irrigators um, because river red gums can't be flooded every year. They, they do need flooding every now and again but uh, certainly not annually. You can also see uh, the line where the river normally sits at the moment. We're about a foot lower than the normal height of the river. Oh. Have a look at these trees, they're just enormous. Ooh. Yep, you, oh look. It's a little wasp who found me quite interesting. Anyway, we'll um, there you go, go be on my paddle. That's better. All right, okay. Makes me a little bit nervous going over a log. <laughs> uh, I was just happily paddling along and I see this little speck of something flying across the water at me. I stop paddling and look down as it goes past me and it's actually a kite surfing spider. I must look up what these spiders are called. <laughs> what they do is they spin out a really long thread of web. I have seen some that actually create like a, it's kind of like a rat's nest of, of web. And um, I guess they throw it into the air and the wind catches it and then they hang on. Uh, because that, it is literally kite surfing. They use their web to surf down the river. So every time I've had a, a headwind on the river, I have been 
um, past by these kite surfing spiders. They're very cool. They're not very big. Uh, the biggest one I've ever seen was that one just then and it was mm, probably the size of my little fingernail. Not big. Um, usually they're much smaller. So the only reason that there would be kite surfing spiders is their relationship to the river. And I find that really interesting. There is not that much water around. And these spiders have absolutely specialised <laughs> on moving their way up or down the river, depending on where the wind is. Just, just magnificent. I love that. I must find out what they're called. Kate Growrock, this is a shout out to you. I'm sure you know. <laughs> so, the other, the other insects that I've really enjoyed watching as I've been paddling along are the native wasps. So on very still days when, when the water is just glassy, you see lots of bees struggling, you know, <laughs> trying to move because um, they've got wet and they didn't realise obviously that the water was liquid. And so <laughs> bees are important. So I have a bee scooper now. So whenever I see one, I pull it out and stick it on my bag until he dries off and then he flies away. But the native wasps <laughs> are river walkers. You know, they, they literally, they land on the water. They have a good drink, you know, a good long drink. And then they lift their wings up and they fly away. <laughs> it's amazing. I actually watched one get washed through a strainer before and it made it through the first lot, all right, but then it hit uh, a twig uh, as it went through the second lot and so it just grabbed on, climbed up, shook itself off and flew away. <laughs> it's, it's just amazing how, how the insects are so not fragile. They look very fragile but they're just they're amazing. Well, they can walk on water. That is pretty amazing, isn't it? I will see less and less insects uh, over the course of this paddle because it is getting colder and colder and they do tend to either die off or um, stay close. Oh, there's an azure kingfisher there. Oh. He's doing his little bobby dance. <laughs> They're so pretty, you can't miss them, they're so blue. Oh, this is a gorgeous part of the river. Uh, it is narrow, definitely, uh, but it's also very pretty. It's a lot more diverse um, than some of the forest that I've been going through. So I guess I'm probably getting close to the edge of the forest now. I am definitely getting a good kick along from this current. <laughs> G'day! <laughs> I felt a little bit like an animal at the zoo then. They all just looked at me when I waved. <laughs> <laughs> they did eventually wave back. Oh, that was quite funny. Well, I should say that's the end of the Narrows because over to my left, I'm looking back at Barmer Lakes at the moment. I've got no issues, it's kind of nice. Run a water into a paradise. Got no drama, feels like we arrived. Picture perfect, it don't exist. But when I'm with you, don't have to question it. True to ocean.
so I'm coming out of the forest. <laughs> I see all these lineup of uh, caravans. <laughs> I assume that's the caravan park. Apparently, there is a beach just before the bridge. Let's hope so. Awesome. That looks like a nice beach. Day. It really wasn't, but it felt like it. All right, well, oh, let's make the magic happen. <laughs> okay, at the Barmer pub. Oh my god, how good does that look? <laughs> I'm very excited about that. And they very kindly let me do some recharging while I eat my dinner. Mm. I think I deserve this today. Alright. Enough talking. More reading. <laughs> See, See you later. Cheers. Okay. Well, there you have it. The Barma Palm has been done. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, now I've got to remember how to get back. That was awesome. That was exactly what I wanted to. I think I'm going to wake up feeling good tomorrow. So I'm on um, Crown Land tonight, although it um, sort of is part of the caravan park. So it's outside of the caravan park, but I'm using the facilities. So. I've um I've paid to stay at night with them because I just didn't I didn't want to put my tent all the way over there. I wanted to stay close to the canoe. But it is the middle of the night, it's about two o'clock in the morning. I woke up about an hour ago to a car bouncing through a dirt road with a trailer on. Driving really erratically. When I fully woke up, I realised that they were on the other side of the river, thankfully. Um, and it sounded like they, they were doing a midnight rubbish dump. So they're driving along and you can hear bottles falling out of the back of the trailer. And that. Idiots. Anyway. I thought, oh, well, that'll be over soon, but no. He must have been driving around like a lunatic like that for a good half an hour, so. And after a while, he went out into the bush and was doing more burnouts and stuff. Yeah, I'm just, I'm ready for some proper town time in a cabin. And just, you know, 100% safe when I sleep, I think. That's one of the issues I'm having. Is that I'm just sleeping on edge every night. How delightful. Right, <laughs> let's go. Ooh. Oh, give it back. <laughs> All right, just double check I didn't lift anything. 
All good. And there it was, the Balmer Bridge. for the muscles to warm up this morning. I think I'm definitely in need of a day off, a proper day off. I was able to extend my cabin booking um, forward a day. So I'll be getting into Moama on Friday, which means I'll have four days off over the weekend which is excellent um, I can use Friday to do all of my cleaning and um, you know restocking and all that sort of thing and um, that way I can do touristy things on Saturday and Sunday but it will give me one day to just do nothing <laughs> which I am really quite looking forward to it's a slow river today. I suspect it's going to slow down more and more the closer I get to Tarumbury Weir. Uh, it's just doesn't make the paddling quite as much fun. Lunch on the float again today. I have a cream cheese sandwich. I kind of wish it was peanut butter, but um, I couldn't get the butter to spread this morning. So cream cheese it is. I have two of them. Mmm, this is very uninspiring. Mmm. <laughs> Boring. I wonder if I can... I might make a chip butty with it. Let's just put a few in to give it a bit of crunch. Oh, tree. That's a bit better. The salt from the chips, salt and vinegar from the chips is giving it some nice flavour. Alright. Yes. A lot of the bird calls you can hear are blue wrens and silver eyes. Which are all birds about this big. <laughs> Not big birds at all, but they've got big voices. I'm sure there's going to be people that tell me that those two birds aren't the only ones you can hear, and that's probably very true. <laughs> but the I can't even do it. That noise, I'm almost certain, is blue wren. So just up here is 1736 which means from here it's 20 kilometers to the caravan park. So a campsite anywhere from now will work. However, there is a school group around here and that they're teenagers as well. So it doesn't sound, <laughs> it doesn't sound very restful. So we'll keep going. I'm just hoping that there's not another school group and not a couple of kilometers further down. It would be safe for the night though, you could guarantee that. Oh, gee, I'm looking forward to some good night's sleep. I sleep a lot, but I don't sleep deeply because I'm constantly waking up.
at the moment. I could certainly have a snooze right now. So that's the first campsite I'm rejecting today. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be more. No. no. Go with your gut. Your gut says no. So do all the bugs. So Bill and Sandra, I found your campsite from uh, March 2021. <laughs> That's one way of marking it. So, given the uh, toilet paper decoration the whole way around this camp, as well as all the bottle caps and and everything <laughs> this is one messy campsite I <sighs> the sense I get from campsites like this is that people that don't really care come and stay at them uh, and I don't really want to be visited in the middle of the night by people that seem to think of these places as their own so I shan't be staying here. I'm going to keep going. Oh, it's only 20 to 4, so that's, that's not a problem. It's just, um, oh, it's a bit disappointing because, as you can see, it's a, a pretty nice campsite. And yes, I'm just going with gut feeling. Uh, but gut feeling has served me fairly well so far, I think. I mean, there's toilet paper down here on the beach. It's just... Who thinks that's okay? <laughs> Campsite number two rejected. Mm. You know what? I'm going to quite enjoy five nights of not having to do this particular part of the day. This is what I find the most stressful out of the whole day, is finding a campsite that I like. And I know it's just me being picky. There are lots of people that would have stayed at this one and the last one. Not sure if you can hear that, but there are a whole heap of vehicles buzzing around out there. Hopefully, I'm hoping it's on the other side of the river. I am quite wary of being visited tonight. I'm not too far off the road, but I had to pull over and so this will do for the night. I'm ready to have a, a decent break. It's, I have enjoyed it and I am, I'm still enjoying most of the day, um, but I am having more <sighs> moments. <laughs> So it's it. I'm ready for a break. <sighs> Look, I even considered going home from Ichika, to be perfectly honest. Um, I hope that doesn't continue all night. And that's one of the reasons that I considered going home, is that and I alluded to it earlier today when I was looking for a campsite. This is, this is the stressful part of the day. It's not enjoyable. I very rarely find a campsite that feels comfortable anymore and I'm not sure why that is. Um, it's, it's possibly just because there's just so many people around here in New South Wales and Victoria that you just can't find wild camps. Uh, that are any good. <laughs> They're all crap. Anything that's a good spot to camp has been turned into a campsite and therefore has a road to it. Um, 
And I think that's what I'm finding challenging is that coming to terms with the fact that you're just going to have to stay in campsites. Uh, look, for the most part, it's, it hasn't been a problem. Not at all. Um, it's just those that couple of times where you're sort of mm, woken up in the middle of the night or sleeping next to a road and you just don't sleep properly. Um, you're on edge all night so anyway the thought came and the thought went I did decide that that's just silly uh, I need to keep going not that I need to keep going I want to keep going but I do need a break and this will be a good headspace break I can look back on the journey that I've done I can spend that time reflecting on all the good that I have experienced um, as well as the bad. I mean, I've documented everything. <laughs> so I get a more balanced picture of it. Um, and also uh, just, just just spend a day or two actually letting that sink in. You know, that's I think that's important. I've gone a quarter of the way and I haven't stopped to reflect too much. Uh, I just haven't stopped. Um, one of the thoughts that did cross my mind today is that through hikers in America call their days where they don't walk any distance zero days because they're making zero kilometers progress. And I actually think that's a more relevant and accurate description <laughs> of a day in town than a rest day because there is no resting uh, on a day where you're in town you're just non-stop from pretty much from the minute you get in until the minute you leave except for when you're sleeping you're just you're on the go the whole time um so in a chuka or well, moama where i'll be staying for the four days i am actually going to have a rest day a day where i probably won't leave the cabin or I won't leave the caravan park at any rate but I'm just going to spend that that day oh just one of the four days um just relaxing <laughs> just stopping let's hope I don't get visited tonight I really don't want to god it would be nice to just have a nice quiet night I kid you not it's 12 30 I just woke up to the sound of a car driving around. This is ridiculous.
Okay, so I've just spent the last hour and a half trying to get my drone out of a gum tree. I didn't fly it home soon enough and it returned home through a gum tree. Oh, I'm torn as to whether to leave it or to keep trying. Oh. I mean, the drone's stuffed, but I can get it fixed. It's the footage that I want off of it, but it's... Uh, thankfully, I've been very lazy with the drone. I haven't put that much footage on there. Okay. Oh, so close. Oh. I've had so many so places. Oh, that was one of the closest. Oh, come on. Uh. 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 This rope is getting shorter and shorter. Uh. I'm clearly not very good at this. I would not do very well in Survivor at all. And again. Oh. oh my lord. It's okay, I give up. Honestly. <laughs> be one of those days isn't it it really is okay let's head into a tree here come on Emma. Oh. Oh. goodbye drone more the point SD cards okay that was a rough morning ah, it's still not great but I've got to get into Echuca so it's midday I'm a bit beaten up and bruised from trying to get that drone out um, so um, <laughs> probably not going to record much this morning ah, I just want to get into town get clean and reset. Okay. <sighs> I just want to clarify leaving the drone is very frustrating but it's not what's making me upset. Uh, I mean it's adding to it but it's not. God it's just a thing it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Things are replaceable. But I'm feeling very defeated at the moment. I don't want to quit. But the thought is not leaving my head. I know I can do this. I know I can. I just have to give myself a bit of space and time to think. That's all. And process everything up to this point. Ready for the next stage. Um, yeah. I'm certainly not quitting today. Definitely not. Just passing the Golden River. Oh, it's very much like the Murray River.
There you go. They moor their houseboats differently in a chicka. Side on. So this looks like the outskirts of Echuca Moama. I think I've got about two kilometers left to paddle uh, before I get to the caravan park. Oh, and that smells like an abattoir. How lovely. And there's the caravan park. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so I made it. Thank goodness. So I haven't put any gear in yet. I thought I'd show you how nice this looks before I put any gear all over the place in it. Uh, so it is basically a two bedroom house, full kitchen with an oven. I'm very excited about that. I have pastizzis coming. <laughs> uh, there's the spare bedroom. There's my bedroom. Oh, that looks good. Big bed. Oh, look at that bathroom. Oh, a big shower. That's very exciting. Oh man, am I excited about a shower. And a separate loo. Well, there you go. These cabins are very nice. There you go. I'm going to put my stuff in and settle in for the day. And then I'm going to order pizza for dinner tonight. And I'm not moving after that. <laughs> An awful start to the day. Um, but with the two and a half hours it took me to paddle here, I, you know, got to process <laughs> all those emotions. And I'm feeling much better about it. Look, I lost a bit of footage and I lost a <laughs> rather expensive toy. But in the grand scheme of things, uh, whatever. You know, lesson learned. I'm, I'm going to have a good, good relaxed night tonight. I was worried I was just going to be fretting all night, but it's the small things that really make a difference, isn't it? So when I checked in, I had, uh, uh, the person checking me in was just lovely. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Someone's already helped me up from the river with all of my gear. Like as soon as I checked in, they did that. Just couldn't ask for more from this caravan park. And I still get to look at the river for the next four days. So I'm... <laughs> I don't feel like I'm shutting myself away from it, which is good. Um, yeah, so I'm going to bring in all my stuff, have a shower, <laughs> get clean, and then I'm going to go and clean all of my clothes. Uh, so yeah, tonight, I, I'm, because I'm here early, I will go and do the washing tonight rather than tomorrow. Uh, well, that's what I say now. We'll see how I feel after a shower. <laughs> 